Okay, check it out. We've got Mecha Kong, Little Kong, and Godzilla with a color change. Sounds pretty interesting. Or does it? Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis, and of course, always keeping it real when it comes to theme parks. And I'm going to be giving you my review of the new movie, Kong, Godzilla, The New Empire, which had their previews uh, tonight, Thursday night. We'll be officially releasing it tomorrow. I have some mixed feelings about this uh, about this film. A couple of bright spots about this film, and that I am eager to share with you. So before we get started, please do your girl a favor and please do hit that subscribe button. And once you do, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when your girl is hot fresh content for you to enjoy. So with that said, let's get going with this review. So my overall non-spoiler impressions about this film, it's a fun popcorn movie. I mean, you've got huge ass gorilla, a huge ass radioactive lizard stomping around over stuff and fighting. That's what we came to see. That's pretty much what uh, what you got. And the plot does not get any more intricate than that. This is not Godzilla minus one, okay? It's more like Godzilla fever dream, you know, in a tag team movie. That's pretty much what uh, what this is. So what you see is pretty much what you uh, what you get. Um, Mini Kong, who we've seen in the trailer, I'm gonna call him Little Man from now on. He was a very interesting character and not a character that I had suspected to run into in a film, uh, film like this. But then again, he was fun. Uh, he was fun. I would say if you are a if you are a Kong fan, you will definitely feel like this film caters to you. One of the things that I like about the MonsterVerse movies with Kong is that he has a lot more facial expression so you can better feel what he's feeling, what he's reacting to, which is kind of cool. Uh, oh, he's also got some mecha going on too. So, you know, mecha Kong, I guess I'm gonna call him. Anyway, yeah, so he's got, a, he's got some kitted out gear with that. If you are a Godzilla fan, you are going to like and not like this movie at the same time. Godzilla is more of an afterthought. Now, I know it's like we can't get enough of Godzilla, but this film did not feel like a good balance at all with the two of these. It seemed to mainly be focused on Kong and his uh, his issues, his findings and all that. While meanwhile, Godzilla is just stomping around and sucking up all the energy, you know. We couldn't get any more than that. And of course you see in this film, Godzilla fights another, uh, another Titan and that fight's over like this. It's like, come on, can you give us, give us some more of that? But anyway. Uh, yeah, so if you're a Godzilla fan, you're still going to enjoy it. You're, I, I feel you're still going to you're still going to have fun, but you are definitely going to feel slighted as a Godzilla fan. Uh, there is an Easter egg redemption that is in this. I mean, I shouldn't call it Easter egg, but there is a point in redemption, which I can kind of see probably why they didn't make Godzilla 
the main focal point of this film, or at least as much as uh, as Kong, how they set it up. But that's in the spoiler section of uh, of this review. So what I will say is, whether you're a Kong fan, whether you're a Godzilla fan, you're still going to have a fun popcorn time watching this film. Now, I saw it in RPX. I just happen to like RPX, and I got a free upgrade uh, from Regal from being part of their ultimate rewards club or whatever the heck it's called. But anyway, but if I was going to pay standard price to see this, I, I wouldn't really go for the upgrade for this. I would go during the regular showing. Um, I think you get the same kind of impression. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's, it's a popcorn movie. Um, there's enough in it to keep you interested, uh, but it's not something that is going to seriously expound your horizons or something like that. It is what it is. <laughs> so let's see, that will wrap up the non-spoiler portion of this. I would give it uh, unbiased. I would give it about a seven out of 10. Biased, I would give it a seven and a half uh, out, of, uh, out of 10. So that's the way your girl sees it. So I'm about to head into some spoiler territory in three, two, one. Okay, so let's hit the spoilers. Your boy Kong apparently winds up finding this new area of a uh, hollow earth that we didn't know existed and hadn't been charted. He just happened to fall into a pit. Boom. Guess what? He finds it. Uh, hmm. Happens to meet a uh, little Kong who, in the beginning, turns out to be a bit of a prat, actually. Yeah, he just, man, Kong just tried to show him some uh, empathy and it came back to bite him in the butt in numerous ways. But the more we get to know little man, the more we start to see why he is the way that he is. And the more time he spends with Kong you know, cause like his, uh, like his idol. We'll get back to that part in a minute. Um, the Iwu girl, Iwu, Iwi, I, yes, Iwi. Okay. So apparently we thought the Iwi had, I, 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 whatever. We thought they were all gone, right? Except for this chick. Apparently they got a compound down there in hollow earth and all of these visions and, stuff she's been seeing and she feels like she's drawn to this place. Well, apparently this is like ground zero for the Ewu and they've been able to go different places around the earth, and, you know, the little tunnel parts in, uh, in hollow earth. Apparently they can manipulate gravity. So that's their, uh, that's their technology. So anyway, through the, uh, Ewu chick, guess what? She is there and through her she is able to bring mothra to life okay so i love mothra one of my favorite kaiju characters next to godzilla um i still was so upset about what happened in godzilla king of the monsters she sacrificed herself for godzilla but i forgot that they mentioned in that movie that there was a second egg and this is the second egg. So there we have Mothra 2.0. Loved the character uh, rendering of her. She's absolutely gorgeous. So uh, it did my heart good to see Mothra in there. And she was instrumental in basically saying, hey, Godzilla, guess what? You need to go work with Kong. Go back. Save the humans. Um Save the humans from what? You probably want to know. Okay, well, remember when I was talking about that hollow, you know, that section subterranean earth next to hollow earth that no one knew about okay so apparently there's this gangster band of uh of gorillas i believe they called them the scarred one or or whatever it kicked off a whole bunch of nonsense but anyway he rules the rest of those gorillas there with an iron fist including uh little man little kong and this scarred gorilla scarred one uh wound up uh murkin little man's dad so yeah that was kind of sad to see but uh you know kong is just like this cannot stand and 
he and the scarred one, well, let's just say they didn't get along too well. So to wrap things up, by the end, you know, of the film, got Godzilla, you know, Godzilla defeats, you know, the scarred, uh, scarred gorilla leader. And of course, you have got uh, Godzilla and Mothra versus the Ice Titan, who apparently is being manipulated. You know, she's imprisoned and uh, Scarred Gorilla has one of, I guess, one of her spikes that controls her through pain. Like whenever he uses it, it inflicts pain and she's like blowing ice on people and everything. Anyway, she gets her revenge at the end. That's pretty much freaking it. I mean, I thought this film did not need really any of the humans and that seems to be an Achilles heel when it comes to the legendary uh, MonsterVerse movies. We're there to see monsters do stuff and I was much more invested. Granted, I'm not a big Kong fan. I was more invested in watching his part of the story as opposed to when the humans start talking and doing human stuff. I do not care about the humans. I just care about the Titans and Legendary put a couple of nuggets in there of humanity that was, you know, awe and, you know, oh man, somebody got ate by a plant, but they were okay. But once again, Toho does it much better with making us care about the humans in the story as well as the Titans. But with Legendary, all I care is the Titans. I just want to sit there, eat my popcorn and watch the monsters slug it out because that's what we come there for. Um, let's see, I think I said my bias review, I gave it a 7.5. That 0.5 is for bringing Mothra back. Plain and simple. Again, I love Godzilla. They didn't have enough of them. And I was pretty pissed about that, but Mothra shows up. I'm like, okay, I'll give you a half a point for that. But is this some in-depth, amazing film? No. Is it a lot of stuff for the eyes to view? Absolutely. Is it something that you should wait for streaming for? Mm, maybe. Diehard monster fans are going to go into the theater to see this. Your average, eh, average viewer is probably like, eh, maybe I can wait. And you can. You can pretty much, pretty much wait for uh, streaming for that. But if you are a diehard MonsterVerse fan, hey, I don't think you're going to be extremely disappointed to go and check this out. All right, folks, where well, that is my impressions of Godzilla and Kong, the new empire. Let me know in the comments, is this a film that you plan on seeing? If you're a MonsterVerse fan, does this one uh, grab your attention at all? And hey, after watching this film, are you still, you know, Team Godzilla or, you know, Team Kong? I'm still Team Godzilla. And frankly, after watching this film, I wanted to go back and watch Godzilla King of the Monsters and I wish that I could stream uh, Godzilla minus one. So if you got some value from this video, please do hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.